Hey guys, am I audible, visible? Hello Pankaj, hello PM, hello Rohit. Am I audible, am I visible? If so, say me hi and hello. Hope you guys are doing good. Okay, there are too many ads coming in, right? It's time to reduce it. Okay, am I audible? Am I visible? Anyone? Hello, hello, Barman. Great. So I hope I'm audible and visible. Fine. Great. So guys, uh, so uh, the entire team of PW had come up with this idea of uh, how to develop uh, a series which is not primarily to pass an MBBS exam, right? Or to ACE, NEEP, PG, or FMG, or INACT. Because we have done that. We have done multiple of them. We have... Uh, to understand core concepts, we have our classes. Uh, we have PYQ series, we have image based session in the PW Meta Next program. So what we thought was like, uh, why can't we think differently? So there have been lots of problem statements in MBBS. One problem statement which always I feel personally is under uh, stressed or given much importance is how to develop a critical thinking. So first of all, let me tell you what is a critical thinking mean, right? Especially in the era of artificial intelligence. Uh, most of uh, the entire world speaks that uh, doctors will be replaced, right? But if we develop this critical thinking, I don't think we'll be ever replaced, right? So that is the motive. So how to develop a critical thinking from a student MBBS point of view, be it you're in first year or in final year or an intern, I think this approach will definitely be helpful, right? Fakti, um, uh, if you are in Nishche Batch, I think uh, you stick to that. Pathoma, I'm a fan of Pathoma, but it's more aligned towards a U assembly pattern, right? Okay, let's come back to this. So first goal is, what do I mean by critical thinking? See, uh, when you are in a school, right, you have an NCRT, you have the formulas, you apply you know, physics or uh, problems or chemistry problems, right? So if I change the scenario, sometimes some students stumble. It's the same concept, but the scenario changes. I should be able to apply, I should be able to ace, right? That's what critical thinking is. That is very, very important in medicine. Leave NCRT, need QG, they might not change much. But it's fever. Fever can happen in a one day old kid, can happen in a 90 year old person, can happen in a middle aged, can happen in a male, can happen in a female. Fever can be 100 degrees centigrade, fever can be 104 degrees centigrade, fever can be present for one day, fever can be present for two years. It's a one fever, but the various permutation combinations. So what do I think if it's fever in this age group? What do I think of the diagnosis if a fever is an elderly, right? That is the goal of critical thinking. If I lack critical thinking, I'll go with the template. Ah, fever him. Let's do the fever profile. Everything, everything, like there are 10, 20 tests. Let's do it. Whichever is right, let's go and diagnose. That is not what a doctor is meant to be, right? I can know, okay, this is the symptom. I'll filter down few things. I have two or three differential diagnoses. Do an investigation to confirm, go ahead and treat. If we lack critical thinking, you do everything from an X-ray to an MRI, functional MRI or a PET scan to diagnose. But if you have critical thinking, you can narrow down the simple clinical examination and do one or two tests to confirm the diagnosis. That's what you're going to do, right? So uh, let's let's guys, uh, let's make it a little bit more interactive. Barman, Siddhi and Fakti, how many of you guys have been to your what postings till now? Have you started your what postings? Have you been there? What have you been doing? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it ugly? Do your seniors give you enough space to examine, auscultate, percus, palpate? Yes, no, maybe. If you started your ward postings, you must have definitely, uh, some will definitely enjoy it. At least in the early half, you'll definitely enjoy it, especially when there's no questions targeted at you, right? You have then ultimate freedom to do whatever you want, right? So this is primarily the series which is going to help us. Okay, great fact. To differentiate from a student, and a doctor, student reads, student writes exam, student looks for the mark, student looks for distinction, student looks for honors, maybe gold medal or need PG first time. But the doctor you know, doesn't even care about any of these. The real life people, the patients don't even care whether you're scoring need PG first rank or need PG one lakh rank. What they want is, is the doctor good enough for me to diagnose the problem? Yes, plus compassionate enough for me to give a proper treatment and explain to me. So this series is a transformation. Yeah, we have taken care of the student in you in our Nishay batches and Praram batch and Shushita batch. This series is primarily for the doctor in you. How to develop critical thinking so that you think like a consultant, 
you diagnose and approach a problem like a consultant, right? If you are in second year, I would say, let's start it now. Don't say that, huh, I'm not doing much in my clinical postings. So let's, let me do this next year or final year, right? Why I want it to be early. Earlier is always better. Not just because uh, you can have enough time to apply it or revise it, right? How many of you accept that when you are uh, in your sixth standard or in your fifth standard? Very open to new ideas when you are a child. Very, very, very curious. Everyone was curious, right? When you are very young, we are always curious. The curiosity over the period of time is reduced a lot, right? Great Siddhi, please go, right? You will be the odd one out now, but I am 100% sure the odd one out, the top 1% will be the person who will think the right way, not the herd mentality. That's very, very important, right? When I was a kid, coming back to this, when I was a kid, I was always curious. I'll do this. If it fails, I'll try other, right? I'm very, very happy if it remains the same faculty. If it fails, I'll try another. If it fails, I'll try another. But over the period of time, what has happened is the stress, the exam, the force has slowly reduced the curiosity and say that, ha, huh, this is the template. Let me follow the template. I don't want you to follow the template, right? Good evening. The reason I don't want you to follow the template is more curious you are, right? More uh, errors you make, more mistakes you will avoid when you become a clinician, when you become a consultant. That is very, very important. Curiosity is the most important thing that helps to kind of make your entire approach to a disease or a patient very different from other person who is not curious. They'll go in the template. Template will give only one. Huh? Curiosity is only will give the hook shot for a six or a scoop, right? The curiosity is very, very important. And this is going to reignite the curiosity. What I'll be doing in the series is I'll give you cases. I'll ask you what you think of. Make mistakes. Make mistakes here. No one will be penalized here. You will not lose mark, patient will not have a problem. But at some point of time, mistakes will never be forgotten. Maybe 10 years down the road, you might have seen this case. Ah, that time it will strike. I made a mistake once, that's there in my memory. Let's not do the mistake again, fine? It's completely fine. See, seniors will be there. I'll tell you what I, I want you to do when you are going to the ward postings. I know seniors will be there and I'm also a little bit aligned with them because they are the exam going batch. They need more attention. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that you don't require attention, right? It'll be on YouTube, a fact, fine? It'll only be on YouTube, fine? So I'll tell you what exactly you do, because I know for a fact that when you're a second year stepping into the clinics, seniors will be like, huh, my, uh, my, my case, give me time. I have to examine, I have to present. Absolutely fine. But we can learn even from a tiny little bit of paper in the ward. That's what we're going to do here, right? Generally what happens is in most of the cases, most of the hospital, any case, Right, from a starting from a fever to a cancer, whatever it is, simple or very, very difficult, fine. So here, history taking is a starting point. If you've seen my bridge to, uh, from a uh, school, college to a hospital, I have talked about the importance of history taking, right? Uh, you, I am not able to read your name, but whoever said that senior is uh, dominating, you will have time for history taking, no? You can go in the evening to take a history, right? You'll definitely go in the evening to take history. After uh, your uh, pharma patho micro classes, a cup of tea, walk, go and talk. For history taking, you need to talk to the patient, develop a rapport, and that should be more than enough, right? That's the first point, right? Okay, second is my physical examination. You need to examine. Examination is an art, is a skill which you'll slowly develop. History taking is just talking. There is in medical lab, there's something called a clinical corner. Open that, you will know what exactly to ask and also why to ask. Develop it. Physical examination, you need someone's guidance. If you're going in the evening, your intern might be there. At least one intern might be curious enough for you to teach. Then comes your differential diagnosis. Based on all the facts I have, I come to a differential diagnosis. Finally, I investigate to confirm. It could be a biochemical investigation, a culture, a pathological investigation, biopsy, CBC, or a radiological CTMRA. This is almost always a step to approach a patient. History, physical examination, DD, and investigation. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to be much more concerned about this part, the investigation part, because obviously that's my forte, right? So investigation part is much more important for me. What we're going to do is, I will start every case what is going to be there in series from this part. I'll give you 
a little bit of history, physical examination findings, DD, relevant ones, and it'll focus more on investigation. You said that my senior is not giving time. Senior is not letting me touch the patient. But the case sheet will be in the ward, right? Which will have all the attached investigations that is available to you even during your posting hours. Look into that. We go to an unexplored area, that's a treasure, and you're going to explore it and you're going to learn from it. You, in the same case sheet, this will be written, history will be written, examination findings will be written, DD will be written. So the base steps are already done. Look at the investigation, try to see, try to learn, and try to maybe make an assumption, this could be the probable diagnosis. So we're going to go to the place which has not been cared much by our seniors, and we're going to learn from that, right? So that that problem is also solved. My senior is not letting me, right? Never give excuses. Let's go forward. If the senior is not letting you touch the patient, let's set the report. If the senior wants a report, let's test the patient. Senior cannot be in both the place, right? Hopefully they won't be, right? Okay, now, tiny things matter. Why we wanted the series is, see, I'll give you a simple example. I want you guys to ask, uh, it's a very simple question. Who is online? I want you guys to answer this. You must have read this in your first year also, okay? Which WBC, neutrophil lymphocytes, which of these two WBC will increase during a viral infection? What do you guys think? I'll tell you why so tiny things matter, why it is important for us. Which of the WBC will increase during viral infection? Neutrophils or lymphocytes? Just comment N or L, that's more than enough for me. Which WBC will uh, increase? By default it is lymphocytes. Na? Obviously lymphocytes increase during any viral infection. Be it an influenza, be it a COVID, be it most of the viral infection, lymphocytes will increase, right? Perfect. Now, why is it tiny things matter is, when you look at a child, CBC, a CBC is complete blood count of a child. In a child, normally in an adult, what you must read in physiology is 30, 25 to 30% is lymphocytes. So we think that if it's 45, 50%, it's elevated. Right, you're absolutely right. But till five, six years of age, close to 50% lymphocyte is normal. So when I look at a child's CBC, complete blood count or an investigation, I should think differently. I should not look at them and say, ah, this patient had a lymphocytic, inf uh, a lymphocyte elevation, so it's a viral infection or something of that sort. No, it differs. The values differ. The hemoglobin differs. Platelet differs. Many, many things differ. These are very tiny things, which generally is not taught in a college because of the time crunch, right? I'll give you one more uh, beautiful example. Uh, how many of you have seen uh, a tube like this uh, in your college? Why is not writing? Just give me a second. Have you seen a tube like this? Which will be there in your college to collect the blood where the cap will be red color, purple color, green color, blue color. You must have seen. You must have definitely seen. Nah? So that one, nah, that is very, very important for me. I'll tell you why. That tube and the blood collection actually determines the value. So if a blood is not collected properly, blood is not processed properly, the answer will be wrong. So these are never told to a doctor. But what I interpret, I interpret only the final things. I don't look at what is the starting point. When I don't know the journey, I look only at the final output, I cannot enjoy it. I cannot find the tiny things. And those tiny things, make you from ordinary to extraordinary. And we're going to focus on the tiny things. Very, very simple things. Like for example, I said lymphocytes. Mean corpuscular volume changes. That also changes. So there are very tiny things which help me to diagnose. That one simple report is enough for me to diagnose thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, sometimes even a leukemia. Just a single report of CBC. That's what we're going to focus on, right? And just to give a brief, We'll be starting the series from tomorrow. We'll, we'll all, I'll also tell what all uh, we'll be doing uh, over the, uh, the goal of the series as well, right? A case of infection, we'll start with that. What are the clues which helps me to say, okay, most likely this is this diagnosis. I got a case of pleural effusion, ignore it. What should I do to look at the cause of the pleural effusion? Why I'm doing this is, we have dealt simple, we have completed inflammation chapter in your uh, Nishche batch. We'll use those concepts. We are in hemodynamics, we'll complete that. We'll use those concepts. A bleeding disorder, how do I approach? We'll use this concept of hematology. I have a case of breast cancer. When you go to neoplasia, how do I approach? I have a disease, case of 
immuno deficiency disorder what all to look for how do i approach what questions to ask we had an nadp oxidase deficiency right chronic granulomatous disease only catalase positive that's a clue there's a very tiny clue but a very powerful clue we are going to look at the clues we are going to look at the exact important things and the tiny things we, which is generally not noticed we look at the notice and we'll come to a conclusion right this is just to build the curiosity in you the doctor in you will it help me in an exam maybe maybe not will it help me to think better absolutely yes will it help me to diagnose better absolutely yes that's a focus obviously that's a focus exam and the mark and the results is a passing cloud automatically will be sorted right so what we'll be doing in the series is we'll have discussion twice a week today is just an introduction of what we are going to do right and open to your discussions as well any questions if you have two days a week we'll have cases very simple cases i am not going to look at the 5% rare things which comes in exam i don't care about the 5% rare things we are going to focus on the 90 to 95% common things iron deficiency anemia important uri simple upper respiratory tract infection important viral flu important we are going to look only at that this 5% leave it you have md dm fellowship for that for an mbbs if you focus on the 90 95% that is more than enough i would also say for md also this more than enough it's a 95% of the case no that's the bread and butter that's what is going to come in your clinic when you sit there we are going to focus on that right and i'll approach to simple cases not complicated cases like a paraneoplastic syndrome syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion will give you a excitement siadh excitement lambert eaton syndrome excitement but why does muscle pain happen in fever not exciting but that's a commonest thing we'll look at the simple things right and the goal like i said is not to clear an exam you will clear that is to learn something out of your case look at the tiny points and hopefully at some point of time we all will become amazing doctors and when i become old i'll be in superb hands so that i'll be treated properly right so guys any doubt you tell me let me know i will be starting tomorrow i'll take about uh, one simple case of an inflammatory disorder how to approach them every day i'll not do too much we'll have like maximum 25 minutes because that's the time i feel that you'll have much more concentrations right uh, fact it will be five uh, twice a week twice a week timing might change because of my nischay batch classes but it will be twice a week and it will be at five right okay and uh, like i said like uh, i'll keep to two crisp discussions if possible if not one 20 25 minutes is more than enough for you to spend consistently if you do it over a period of time i think we'll have lots lots more to learn from it fine it's okay no issues fine okay guys any other questions do let me know if not we'll call it a day for today and definitely we we'll look uh, looking forward to more people joining the discussion tomorrow in fact you hopefully you won't have the pharmacy timing at 5 pm tomorrow or if it's there put your headphones on and just listen you need not answer listening and learning is more than important than answering that also might matter but it's fine okay any doubt do let me know If not, meet you guys tomorrow at five. This year batch will keep on going. That's different, and this is different. Fine. Okay. Uh, Ahmed, uh, like I said, days might differ for the only reason I will have a live batch also. Uh, which is for second st year students uh, so i will not be able to tell the exact days uh, it will not be the same days but i'll give you a date like which day it will happen sometimes it will be monday sometimes it will be wednesday i'll give the entire uh, planner of one month ahead of it fine okay great it's on youtube uh, fact it doesn't matter if it's getting pirated around doesn't matter we have to learn that's more than enough okay thank you guys thank you for your